Row crop farmers, farmland owners, and beginning farmers are increasingly curious about soil health. Integrating grazing ruminants ramps up soil health, and the feed value of cover crops can often offset the added cost of planting them. Livestock can also utilize a small grain in rotation or perennials planted on more marginal row crop fields. This video is one in a series through the Minnesota Institute for Sustainable Agriculture's Endowed Chair in Agricultural Systems. Laverne and Mary Jo Forbord manage 360 tillable acres of organic pastures with a low-line Angus cow-calf herd and grass-finished steers on Prairie Horizons Farm. Their beef is sold through a farm store along with products from an organic orchard. Two decades ago, they shifted this marginal row crop land in west central Minnesota into perennials. The Forbords paint a picture of the importance of cattle to the health of this land and the food produced from it their managed rotational grazing system, differences they see in the land after shifting to perennials, and how row crop farmers could partner with younger farmers to integrate grazing cattle. We welcome you to Prairie Horizons Farm. We're in the middle of Langhai Township, Pope County, Minnesota, in the rolling hills with, of the glacial moraine. And we have examples of what it's like to be growing corn here on both sides of us and also we have an alfalfa field that is my feed supply for hay for the herd of cattle in the winter time and 30 years ago we turned a hilly strip just to the east of here into a grassy strip because there was too much erosion that was going on you can see the corn that's growing is hardly covering the ground yet and we're almost mid-june and so come October it'll be bare until next June again where we're proud that we have our, grass, our farm planted into grasses so that it's constant cover on our rolling hills and soaking up moisture and making feed for the cattle. This land that's covered with perennials that the cattle eat and rotationally graze is covered year-round so wind erosion, uh, soil erosion completely out of the picture for us and when we were row crop farming that wasn't the way it was. These kinds of hills uh, will erode not only in, in sheet erosion but big big gullies. It's, it's gashes in the land so the, the land in this topography is especially sensitive to those types of erosion. It's highly erodible land. Uh, not that we couldn't grow corn here and we did. You know we grew 200 plus bushel an acre corn and you can do that with lots of inputs. How do you manage your rotational grazing system? Okay, welcome back to our pasture. This happens to be paddock 10A. It's a 40 acre field divided into four 10 acre strips and this particular field was seeded 10 years ago. It has a diverse mix of four kinds of grasses and creeping alfalfa. Uh, the cows have managed this for all nine years after it got established and I hay it once in a while when we need extra hay. I'll cut off some of these paddocks and these pastures I I don't know how many times cattle have been across them but it's at least three times a year or so nine years it's probably 25 to 30 times they've been across like that spot where they are right now. Um, we try to leave half of what's growing behind and it rejuvenates very quickly. You can see beyond them it looks like nice pasture beyond them they just moved this way. We've converted 360 acres of cropland to pasture over the years, the last 15 years. So we have many, many paddocks like this that we can graze our cattle across. And about 100 acres of it I stockpile for winter grazing so we can graze into December and even January the cattle are out eating stockpile grasses. So it's pretty fun. What are some of the benefits you see from grazing cattle in this landscape? It's so re rejuvenating for the land to have cattle grazing across it, returning nutrients to the soil. 
I just noticed today I told her we have a young couple living at the farm place they want to be their dream is to be young farmers and have cattle and when we put the fence up yesterday we went through a patch of pretty bad Canada thistle and I told Anna I said let's make sure we watch tomorrow when we move the cattle and see what the cows did to those Canada thistles and it just stems left Canada thistles were foot and a half to two feet tall and now it's just stems left because the cattle like them. So it's a good way to, thistles will come in, but cattle like them and it's good feed for them. I love being a student of nature throughout the different seasons. I love the diversity of life and to be um, mostly an observer and sometimes a manager of how that life interacts to yield food for us and I'm sort of hooked on how much diversity can we do here and uh, we'll keep going you know we that's our greatest joy I would say is to add a new species or to spot a new bird or what I really am looking forward to opening up is that whole connection between what we're starting to know about the microbiome of the soil and how that relates to our health through the microbiome of the gut and the foods that we eat that are produced from healthy soil. So uh, yeah, I, I, I would need another lifetime to really um, it, try to experience all that I experience here every day and um, sometimes we talk about it's it's really hard to leave the farm not just because there's work to do here but it's just so wonderful to be here and to experience be a part of what's what's happening the life here just yesterday walking out to move the cows we came upon a hen mallard with 11 eggs in the nest and they were in a paddock that the cows had been in four days prior that duck sits on the nest and the cattle graze around the duck if she spooks and flies away the cattle spook and move away from the nest so that all the eggs were intact but when you're i just heard bobolinks out here and we have dick sissels and hundreds of birds um it's fun to hear the meadow larks and the bobolinks and the dick sissels and all the little sparrows and yesterday i saw this really nifty little blue butterfly butterfly I noticed it because there was a whole bunch of rusty ones they looked sort of like the Dakota skipper that was endangered but I don't think they were that but when I was looking at the little rusty ones here's this little tiny blue one about a half inch high with little dark rings or edges on its wings and it was just fun to I watched it until it flew away and of course we get lots of monarchs out here um, all kinds of wildlife and like Murray Joe mentioned when we first came here you can watch the swallows hanging around the cattle because they they're chasing up insects in the grass and the flies that are around cattle the birds just go right to the cattle because they know that's a good source of insects so there's a lot going on egrets have figured that out too yeah last year there was we had when the cows are grazing like this, there is 28 egrets in around the cattle. They were catching frogs. How might row crop farmers or landowners think about integrating grazing cattle? In order to get from row crops to here is a long journey, not only for what happens to the field, but breaking down what you have been told and what you have been taught uh, and what you market because there's not an automatic market grass-fed beef is not uh, so much a, a commodity as it is uh, you know really a mechanism to foster the health of the land and Im improve the grass this thing for us to do would be to rent out our 360 tillable acres and then they'd look like the hills in the distance that are, they're trying to grow corn on that bare hills because of it's pretty hilly country here, and um, sure it would be the easiest thing for us to do, but then they'd be spraying right next to our house. If you have the uh, just will to just consider it, you know, maybe it feels really awkward, um, but I think that's where it starts is 
maybe trying to pair it with somebody who has livestock and, you know, offer up a, a portion of the farm, the row crop farm. Just just get started, become familiar with it, develop those relationships and work with a, a next generation farmer. Mm-hmm.